thank you so much for joining me today. I have just pressed the record button. I am Cassandra, AKA the Daily Wealth Ninja, and I'm here today to talk about uh, Forex. So for those of you that may not know me, um, I have a day job as a, a full-time programmer. I have a business for digital uh, digital marketing consultancy. And before I get too much further, perfect. Um, I'm also learning Forex in my spare time on top of my day job and my business. So <clears throat> pretty busy, but I understand that it is essential in this day and age that you have a plan B. You can still keep your job. You can still, you know, do whatever makes you happy, but there is no guarantees that like pensions out the door. There's no guarantee that you'll be able to be, even be able to keep your house. I just talked a little bit about that today on my Facebook Live um, about how you could have built and already paid for your house, you know, over a decade ago, you know, maybe even for 70 grand. And now maybe your house is worth because of your local government, right? Uh, maybe your house is worth almost 300 grand and you have to pay taxes on that. I mean, it's ridiculous. So the crazy stuff like that, the fact that Social Security does not give you back what you've paid in, right? All of these kinds of things, the fact that you, you, as people get older, um, it's less likely that you'll less likely that you'll be in a higher paying job to take care of yourself in retirement, or you won't even be able to retire, right? You have to have a plan B. You have to have multiple streams of income. You have to be able to pass on the knowledge that you have to your children and to your family. So this video is directly focused on Forex. Now, for those of you that may not know what Forex is, hey, Debbie, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. For those of you that don't know what Forex is, it is the single skill set I have ever found that allows you to be to create additional income without having to be a salesperson. And so I think I think I believe that that is a skill set that everyone should have. And so I decided last year to at least do one weekly training on Forex in order to pass on this knowledge. So in today's training, oh rather, if you would like to know more information, please be sure to uh, connect with me either on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, as Daily Wealth Ninja. And before I get started legalities, right? I am not a licensed financial advisor. Everything I share today is just information on what I have been learning upon my own journey. Please do not take this as financial investment advice. Again, I am not a licensed financial advisor. Please do your homework. Okay. So what am I going to be talking about today? Um, there is, for those of you who do not know how to trade, um, there is a way, it's basically like stocks. You can look at the charts. If you, if you, based off of historical data, you can tell how things are going. And if it does this one thing, then it's likely going to do this other thing, right? That's, that's basically the gist of reading charts. That's a, what is called a, um, not a traditional trader, a technical, technical trader. And that's what I prefer to be. I prefer to be a technical trader because I love seeing the things in front of me and being able to um, base my decisions from that. And so today I want to be sharing with you a particular candlestick pattern. If you are not aware of what candlestick patterns are, I do have a training on this and my five-day free boot camp. Just be sure to uh, send fa um, this to my page on Daily Wealth Ninja on Facebook. So 5DBC, just send that as a message to Daily Wealth Ninja on Facebook, and you will get information on how to access that free five-day boot camp. So the candle I want to talk about today is not a traditional Japanese candlestick. It is a Heiken Ashi candle. This is spelled different ways. Um, you've, it's in the description, but it doesn't really matter. Basically, this is a very powerful tool. It I would not suggest that it is a replacement for the traditional candlesticks because there's a lot of information that you'll get from that. But your Heiken Ashi can really help you determine when to stay in, when to get out, and lots of really cool stuff. So <clears throat> I'm going to be looking off screen a, a few times because I want to make sure that I am concise with this training because there's still a lot to cover. So bear with me. All right. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to join me in my uh, for Daily Wealth Ninjas of Forex over on my Facebook group, and I will answer questions as I can. So first thing, I want to talk about what exactly does Heikinashi mean? Heikinashi means uh, average bar. <clears throat> the reason for this is how the bars are uh, determined, which I'll cover that here in a little bit. So what are some of the things that your Heiken Ashi candles can do for you? They can help you spot market trends. They can help you spot potential uh, prediction of future prices, right? Um, depending on what you're looking at with those Heiken Ashi bars, it might be a really, really strong uptrend, but the normal Japanese candlesticks might be indicating downtrend and you might get out too early, right? So 
<clears throat> these Heikinashi candles allow you to make your candlestick charts more readable, as well as to make trends easier to analyze, and that way allows you to determine when to stay and when to get out. So what is a Heikinashi? Heikinashi is a, it uses a time series. So it uses this time series to calculate information. What is a time series? A time series is a sequence of numerical data points in successive order. So every time you look at a chart, each candlestick, um, when they're in successive order, that is a time series. <clears throat> so how exactly does this all work? So let me go ahead and bring up paint really fast. I didn't quite prep for this. Uh, we'll do it this way. That would be great. Uh, share screen. Okay. Perfect. So, <clears throat> Um, on your Japanese candlesticks, right, it normally looks something like this. You might have a wick on the bottom. You might have um, a wick or a shadow on the top. You might have a really big body like what you see here. But basically what this is is if this is a buy candle, okay, so if this is a buy candle, depending on how you have your charts, I personally have this green bar filled in as green um, with a green outline so that it's very prominent to me that it's, that it's a buy candle. If it's a buy, that means that your open is down here at the bottom of your candle. Your high is up, oops, is up here at the top of your wick. Your low is the bottom of your wick. And your close is up top because it opened here. So came all the way up here, came down to the low, and then eventually settled back here to close. So that's what the, the buy candlestick looks like. If you're using a sell candle, right, sell candle, the open is here, the high is at the top of the wick, the low of the wick, and then your close is here because, again, it started up here, it came all the way down, it came all the way up, and eventually it settled down to here, okay? So that is your open, ooh, your open high, low, close, your OHLC of your candlesticks. Now, why is this important? The reason why this is important, oh, all right, I guess I won't let me do that. Fine, the reason why this is important is because in Heikinashi, so we'll just call it HA for now, so in Heikinashi, your Heikinashi candles are done by the previous number of candlesticks. So um, for your close, here, let me do it this way. We'll do it in a typed format. Ooh, ooh, I don't like that, ooh. <laughs> okay, so your close is equal to one fourth, right? Because it's an average of your O, H, L C of your current candle, all right? So uh, of your current traditional Japanese candle. And you don't have to know any of this, right? I'm just telling you for those that are curious, all right? So your open is half of your previous candles open and close, okay? So that's how you determine uh, the Heikinashi open for the candles, all right? And I'll show you why this is important, so just bear with me. So your high is gonna be the max of the high of your traditional candlestick, your HA open, and your current HA, oops, HA close, okay? So the high of your current Heikinashi candle is is the max of your current traditional Japanese candle, i.e. the actual price of your um, Forex currency pair, or, uh, or again, the max, the current Heikinashi candles open, which was this stuff up here, or the Heikinashi candle close. So if this one or this one or the current traditional Japanese candle is, is the highest, that's what is determined as your current Heikinashi candle's high, all right? Again, this will make sense in just a second, so bear with me. Your low, it's just like your high, except it's the min, right? 
So it's the minimum of your current traditional Japanese candlestick low, your current Heikinashi open, no, your current traditional Japanese candlestick open and current close. So the low of your Heikinashi candle is the minimum of those three, all right? And if that's wrong, then I did my notes wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> but again, it doesn't really matter and here's why. So right now I am sharing, let me make sure that I'm sharing this, yes. I am sharing um, a chart, a 15 minute chart. Let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, we'll do this. Okay. So right now you are seeing a chart of a harmonic pattern. I can't remember which one this was, it doesn't really matter. Basically, I have tools at my disposal that tell me and alert me to when these harmonic patterns form. This is, this is very powerful because it allows you to really pinpoint some powerful moves. How, why? Because harmonic patterns in your trades, whether they're Forex, crypto, or, or um, stocks, indicate a significant potential and turning point in your price action. So as you can see here, right, here's the top of our harmonic pattern, here's the bottom. It's danced around the entry and then it shot up, went through our take profit one and two, and in theory, it's going to keep going up for multiple reasons, right? We have our uh, Andrew's pitchfork where I'm hoping and expecting it to actually come up to the midpoint based off of um, historical data where um, a good portion of chant of times that it's come up, it, it, like I think it was like 80%, will go to uh, the middle of your pitchfork. So I anticipate it to do that. Uh, it does show signs of slowing down and possibly coming back, but right now I'm not going into that. So this is a harmonic pattern. Um, I have my pitchfork on here, so let me go ahead and draw some of this out because I'm sure some of you might be confused as what you're seeing. So this is the harmonic pattern. You can see that I'm <laughs> doing a horrible job at drawing around it. Um, this, these green lines right here that all go in the same direction, this is all part of the pitchfork. And you can see that the price action is moving nicely through it. Okay. You can see these strange purple markings. So a couple of things about this. This line right here is a monthly support resistance line. And this slightly downward facing purple dashed line is part of a parallel channel for the monthly. All right, so don't worry about those right now. Again, I know that it's on the screen and it kind of can get confusing, but just don't worry about it right now. I'm just telling you what they are. This red line and this red line and this red line, all three of these were showing major uh, support and resistance lines here as well. Um, so these are good to know because this will help you determine where in a channel you are. Um, I think that's all you need to know from here. This is a, another, um, an older pitchfork that it's playing on the bottom of, right? So I'm actually anticipating that it's going to come back up into this pitchfork right here, but we shall see what we shall see. So as you can see, I have a note here that says there's a 15 minutes call from March 28th. That's how, some, how powerful some of these pitchforks can be. They can be years old and still be valid for you today. All right, so Heikinashi. <laughs> Give you some extra stuff today. Hi, Ganashi. So what's going on right now? So right now we're on the 15 minute. I'm going to go ahead and expand something for you. The, uh, the stuff on the bottom is a, um, I forget the term. It's basically a tool that tells you when, when expecting things to happen. So right now it looks like it's going to be turning into a downtrend, which uh, on the 15 minute, which probably isn't a good thing because <laughs> um, it looks like it, um, it might be hitting my stop loss, but we'll see. I have some other things to look at. So I, I use this to kind of help me determine trend and stuff, stuff like that because this has like over 20 different indicators in one. And if you want more information on this, please do send me a message so I can um, explain to you how you can get access. So this is not a Heikinashi candle, but it is one of the ways that I look at what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this other one here. So I have two views. 
the one on the left right here, this one, this is the one that is my traditional Japanese candlesticks. So you can see the actual price movement. It has um, a particular indicator called my MTFFA blah, blah, blah bands. Helps me with trend and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then... Yeah, that's basically it. That's also what these background things are for. This is the MTFA. Um, this is my Fast 33. And the one on the this side right here, this one, this is the one that has my Heikinashi. How can I tell the difference? So let me go ahead and expand this. So you can see that it's a bunch of red and green together. So again, Heikinashi can help you determine trend so as you can see right now, if I were to bring that one back, zoom in a bit on both. Okay. Let me go ahead and turn off my quarters theory. Okay. So right now, we see that this is in an upward trend with the traditional candlesticks. That same movement right now um, on the Heikinashi shows green candlesticks. Uh, this is an indication of a powerful uptrend, right? Right now it's showing some, um, not inconsistencies, but some hesitancy in the market. We will see what it happened, what, ha or what it tends to do um, in the coming minutes. But this is what it looks like. So let me go ahead and move into some other things about this. So some differences between your standard um, Japanese candlesticks, the one over here, right? Your standard, merp, standard, Haiganashi. Okay, so the one on the left is your standard ca uh, Japanese candlesticks, the one on your right is your Haiganashi. The difference between the two is that it's, first of all, it's smoother. I mean, this looks like it's kind of choppy, right? You kind of have some movement up and down, yada, yada. But here it's just, oh, I'm moving up, I'm moving up, I'm kind of not sure if I'm going to keep moving up here, right? You see that it changes right here from green to red because it went into a downtrend, which is exactly what happened here, right? This is the same here as it is about here, okay? So it helps to indicate the trend. It looks a lot smoother than the chop than the choppier traditional Japanese candlesticks. Again, it shows your trend in red. It shows your trend in green. Red being a downtrend, green being an uptrend versus um, the alternate colors we see here, right? This looks like it goes up and down, um, but we can see here that's what it truly looked like in the way of... Um, flow. Um, so five primary signals on how, on what this is telling you. So let me go ahead and make this bigger. All right. And if you've been asking questions, um, I will answer them at the end of this video. Um, I want to um, complete this first. So first of all, f primary signals. So the I use the filled in, but some people do use the hollow. But basically what this is saying is when you see, let's say, some of these candles, all of these candles up to here, so all of these candles, they all have a full body and a wick up top, but none at bottom, also known as a shadow. So this is showing a strong uptrend. Once we get to see things like where there's shadows on both ends and the, the, the um, let's see, shadows on both ends here, right? This is showing market indecision. And so this can tell you, hey, you, you might want to get out. That might be a little bit early, but you might want to get out or at least be, be setting some alerts so that, you, that way you can get out with max profit and minimizing any potential uh, losses. Uh, let's see. So, all right, so if you have your green candles with no lower shadows, again, this is indicating a strong trend, so you, so you can, you want to let your profits ride, regardless, regardless of what your candles are doing on this side, right? So there might come a time, so let me go ahead and put a, a um, vertical line here so you can see what's happening so you see that vertical white line on both charts. 
So as it's starting to move into that, incons uh, not inconsistency, but that uncertainty in the market, we see that the traditional Japanese candlesticks are in fact changing colors, right? So it's still showing a an uptrend even though we have some of these sell candles, right? Uptrend and sell candles. So as long as they have no wicks at the bottom, no shadows, then you are still in an uptrend and you can probably continue to let it ride. If, however, there we go. Oh no. All right. If, however, doggone it. All right. <laughs> if, however, you have a cell Heikenashi with no wick at top, but there's wick at bottom and definitely big bodies, this is a strong indication of a sell trend, right? We see that over here until it gets to about here. So what happens there? All right. So over here, the Heiken Ashi candle did change green, but it looks, it has indecision, right? It has wicks on both ends. So what's happening on the other side? Well, it's kind of having some issues continuing to break through in that pitchfork, but it eventually keeps just going down, 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 down. And then when it changes to two Heikenashi greens, even though they're both um, um, indecisive, you can see that at that same time, that was probably the best time to get out of that downtrend, okay? So when it's when it's um, the green and up, it allows you to to either continue adding to your long um, calls or exit your short calls. If it's the red ones like I just showed, then you would be exiting long positions, right? Because this is um, I'm sorry, exiting short positions and and potentially entering into long. All right, so. As wicks increase with your downtrend, so this part right here, as they increase with your downtrend, that means that there could be a strong um, move to the upside. So this is probably the strongest wick, but as you can see, they keep being pretty strong here. And then here's that change to the upside. And if we move the charts you can see that that was a that was an that's actually a w <laughs> that's a double bottom so look that up that is a good one to know but um it has gone all the way back up to almost where about halfway maybe maybe a little more than halfway back up to the top of this particular harmonic pattern uh, let's see. I talked about so if you have several small Heikenashi candles in a row um, with shadows on either side, that's indecision, as I said earlier. So when you see that, you want to look at the bigger picture. So we see in the end here, it's starting to have some indecision, right? Right, so it's starting to have some indecision right here, which is right here, which is good because it's it's at the at one of the pitchfork um, Fibonels. There's lots of Fibonacci inside of a pitchfork. It's also at the expected take profit for this particular pattern. It's also at the um, one of the Fibonels of a older 15 minute uh, harmonic pattern pitchfork. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why this is probably having some of this indecision. So we really, at this point, would either, um, well, there's no either. You would set alerts. You would make sure that you are 
keeping track of what's going on with your trades. I'm not necessarily watching it, but setting alerts so that you know, hey, you might want to look at this to get out, or you might want to look at this to move your stop loss to stop profit. Hey. So that is um, what you want to do. So you want to look at the bigger picture. So it's currently at 15 minute. If we go to 30 minute, 30 minute shows that it's in a strong uptrend. One hour. see also a strong uptrend so the larger ones are indicating that this is this is going to be keep going up if we went slower so we were on the 15 minute before right let's do this so here's the 15 minute it's uh, all up on that Fibonel and it's coming up on news too so that could make it do all kinds of things so this is the 15 minute it's currently going into indecision in the market Lots of factors for reasons why this is happening. On your five minute, so that means that three of these candles was one of the 15 minute. We see that it has had some indecision right here, right? We see that it's having that crossways pattern. It comes right back up here, which is exactly what it happens here. Now it's having again some indecision. So as you move smaller and smaller on your time frames, um, oops, you will start to see other things that are happening, right? So again, having that indecision, if we go even further to the, to the one minute, so there's other things going on. Let me just point those out. So our MACD is saying that, it, that it's going down, right? You've got your cell on top. It's got a downward angle, right? Um, but there is some indication that it's going to go back up. And then your one minute, one minute is tricky. But um, so far, again, it's, it's hovering around that pitchfork Fibonel, and it is trying to break through um, and move to the top, actually. So I see that um, you have a lot of indications that this is going to keep going up. So that is what, um, what you can do to check how to uh, get in or get out of your trades because you are able to look at a bigger picture to see if that indecision is likely going to keep going in your favor or not and set alarms appropriately. So some other reminders. Um, these Heiken Ashi candles reduce false trade signals. So again, um, your traditional Japanese candlesticks might have a whole bunch of red that's freaking you out as it goes down, right? FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, but if the Heiken Ashi still shows that it's a strong um, buy signal, you wouldn't you wouldn't get faked out too early. So it reduces false trade signals in sideways and choppy markets. Uh, it does lose some price data because it does all that's averaging, um, so it can affect your risk. So that's why I wouldn't say that this replaces the actual traditional um, Japanese candlesticks, right? Something to keep in mind with using Hakanashi is that it can take longer to create your trade setup, but I would rather take the time to trap that trade because then you are minimizing your risk and you're maximizing your ROI because you were patient and you allowed the setup to come to you. Now, last but not least, many of the missing values are that, that you would get with the traditional candlesticks, they are actually used by traders to determine control of risk, analyzing price momentum, triggering entries, setting stop loss, and so many more. So again, there's many reasons why the Heikinashi candlestick pattern is a great addition to your trading style, um, but it should not replace necessarily uh, anything that you are doing. All right. So let me check my notes really fast to make sure that I've covered everything I wanted to cover today. Hey, Anne. Hey, Drew. Thank you so much for joining. All right. Five ways. Awesome. Cool. Well, that is all I wanted to share. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Cassandra, a.k.a. The Daily Wealth Ninja. And if you liked what you saw, please like this video. If you are on Facebook, turn on the live so that you are notified when I go live. If you are on YouTube after this is repurposed, there should be a little subscribe button down below. Click on that and the little bell so that you are notified when I next have additional content. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your day and happy trading. Bye.